Will you please welcome today's press conference guest, Diana Ross. Masses of questions. We knew it would be like this, and it is. I think we'll start with one from the studio. And Alex, we have first of all. I've seen some of your beautiful dresses. Do you ever wear any of them in your real life? Um, no, the costumes for the stage are really too uh, glitzy to wear in real life, really. Um, and we make them especially for the stage, so they're real shiny and all of that. And I designed some of them. Would you like to be a designer one day? Um, well, I don't know. My sister's really good at art and everything, yes. but I'm more into like writing books and stuff. Oh, I like that too. <laughs> you write? Actually, that was one of the things uh, they asked me earlier, what, what I'd like to do someday, and I'd like to travel to exotic places and then write about my adventures one time. You maybe write some, something about my life. Excellent. Mm -hmm. All right, look forward to that. And onto the telephones now. Okay. Right, just hold that one up there. And line one, who's on one? It's Hannah Wilson. Hannah Wilson, good morning, and away you go. Hi, um, I'd like to ask Diana, um, would any of your children like to follow you by taking up singing as a career? And if so, how would you feel about it, and what advice would you give them? Well, mm. I, I think they naturally will want to be in show business. I have a 20-year-old, and she's right now directing a play at college. Mm. And then I have a 19-year-old who wants to be a fashion model and an actress. And then I have uh, a 16 year old who would like to do commercials. <laughs> and my two little boys love music a lot. In fact, they're watching us on television today. And they're in your new video. Yes, they are in the new video, yes. Yeah. So we want to say hello to uh, Ross and Evan if they're watching my yeah, television. Yeah, good morning to them. <laughs> um, would, you, would you actively encourage them to get involved? Would I? Um, actually, I would like them very much to uh, stay mm -hmm. in school and to um, get their education. I think somehow a singing career or an acting career will come naturally for them. And then if they're successful, they'll be very lucky. And then if they're not, they'll always have some work or uh, that they can do. And so actually my daughters are studying, I hope to be lawyers and doctors and <laughs> I don't know, something you know, other than singing, but they might naturally go into the, a career. Okay. Thank you very much indeed for that. Good question, Hannah. Now it's William. Where's William? Yeah. Hi, William. Hello. Um, when you first signed up for Motown, did you think you were going to be this famous? Oh, I don't talk in this anymore. <laughs> um, no, I didn't. Um, I've always liked to um, have goals, but I only decided one thing at a time. The first thing I ever wanted to do was to be a singer. And then the next thing was to make a record. I thought that would be really exciting. And then when I realized after making a record you could be heard on radio, that was exciting. But I never decided that all of a sudden I wanted to be a big famous star. It was like one step at a time. And each of the goals were like attainable. It wasn't like all of a sudden I thought, oh, one day I'm going to be a big actress and I'm going to be a big singer and travel to London. It was just one little thing at a time. And then once I accomplished that, then I thought maybe I could be an actress or maybe I could take the next step. But one thing at a time. Did those decisions come from other people then? Or was it from you? Or did, were there other people who influenced the next step? I had uh, a lot of uh, support and, and influence in my early days. Uh, my manager was Barry Gordy, and he had big ambitions for me to be an actress, but I hadn't really thought of that in the early days. I actually wanted to be a fashion designer and costume illustrator. I wanted to make clothing and beautiful things. and. Uh, so I hadn't really thought, singing was natural for me. I had a natural uh, gift to sing. I've never studied music even. So it's usually the music that I hear I can also perform. Back onto the telephones. Okay. And line two. Good morning, two. Hello. Hello there, let's put a name to you. Uh -huh. What's your name? Moran Joseph. Moran, off you go with your question. Um, where did you first um, meet Michael Jackson? <laughs> He was a, a very young boy. Uh, he was with the Jackson Five then. And they had been singing in their hometown called Gary, Indiana. And their father wanted them to make a record with Motown. And uh, they were brought to Detroit, where I was living at the time, Detroit, Michigan. And that's when I saw them. And they were five boys, and they had little green outfits and little hats on. And that was when everybody recognized that Michael had a very special talent. And then slowly but surely he went out on his own. And you've remained friends all the way through Yes, that. we've remained friends over the years. I just don't see him half as much as I used to when we were, when he was younger. Uh, now I live in, on the west coast, on the east coast of America, and then I travel to Europe a lot, and he lives on the west coast, so we kind of miss each other a lot. But we do talk, and he has met my children, mm -hmm. my boys. 
There's, uh, we, we had Macaulay Culkin in a couple of weeks ago, who, uh, who obviously is, is uh, publicly friends with Michael Jackson as well. We were talking there about when your friends appear in the newspapers and your reaction. How about you? Yeah, well, you know, I think uh, he's always been very shy and, uh, and misunderstood a lot because he's not, he can't do the ordinary things like we can do. I can go to the markets and I can go shopping and I can drive my car and Michael being so very popular that a lot of times he's not able to really get out into the public so he's misunderstood about certain things and I do think that his lifestyle has you know made it very difficult for him to have a kind of a lot of fun like his age group should or should have had you know a lot of uh, good times with their friends and so on. Mm. But he's a very special, and he's a, a very special human being. And so he'll never be sort of, he, I don't think he'll ever be ordinary. He's just really special. Stevie Wonder's also a special, special human being like that. Okay, thanks Thank for you. your question, Laura. Okay. And next time you're talking to Michael, tell him, yes, he can come on the show if he really <laughs> wants to, because he keeps I'm, asking. You know, I'm sure he would love to. I am absolutely positive, because he loves young people. He always has kids around him. And now he, he's bought a, a, a home away, but he's always keeping kids there, and they all come on tours, and they, he just, he's there with kids all the time. His house, in one room of his house, he's got almost every toy that they've ever made for kids, and it's really not for him as much as for his guests to come and visit him. So next time so you speak him. to him, tell okay. him that there's a, show, there's a show in Britain you're just going to love. All right. <laughs> okay.